And welcome to our lecture online. Again, to get a better understanding of how to deal with slabs and sheet of sheets of charge, here we're going to do another example, but in this case, we're going to find the electric field at some distance above a slab of charge when the slab is an insulator in such a way that the charge is evenly distributed throughout the entire slab. So the distance above the slab is capital H and the thickness of the slab is 2H in such a way that H is half the thickness of the slab. And of course, half the thickness is important because we know that at the very center of the slab, there is no electric field. So only the charges above the center affect electric field in the upward direction and only charges below the center affect electric field in a downward direction. And since we're looking for the electric field strength above the slab, we're only concerned about the charges in the top half of the slab, which are going to be affecting the electric field in that direction. Again, we start with, with Gauss's law that E times A equals Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. And of course, we're going to have to figure out what A sub G is. In this case, we're going to say that E, the electric field, is equal to the Q inside the Gaussian surface divided by the area of the Gaussian surface times epsilon sub naught. So we need to determine the surface area of the Gaussian surface, and we need to determine the charge inside the Gaussian surface. And notice the Gaussian surface is going to start at the halfway point of the slab. The bottom is going to be a circle. It's going to emanate upward through the slab, upward towards the point where we're interested some distance, capital H, above the top surface of the slab. And so that will be our Gaussian surface. The only portion that contains the charge is the portion that's inside the slab from the halfway point, from the midway point to the very top of the slab. That portion of it is going to contain charge, but we have the entire surface of the Gaussian surface to deal with. Now, what we do have to be careful of is when we say the surface area of the Gaussian surface, we only care about the portion where we have electric flux going through, and the only portion that's going to have electric flux going through is going to be the very top portion right here, as it's emanating from the inside of the, of the slab upward throughout the Gaussian surface, but only the very top portion is going to have flux through the surface. The side of the Gaussian surface is not going to have any electric field flux going through, and the bottom also will not have any electric field or electric flux going through because electric field at the bottom is equal to zero. All right, knowing all that, let's plug in what this is equal to. For the charge inside, Q inside, that's going to be equal to the volume charge density times the volume of the Gaussian surface that contains charge. So, so maybe I need to include that. That contains charge. And so we have to determine what that volume is. So that would be Q inside, so it's equal to the density times, it'll be this portion of the volume right here, which means that's going to be the area, which is pi r squared, multiplied times h, where h is equal to half the thickness of the slab. Okay, so that's equal to that. Uh, what we could potentially do is we could write it as the charge density times pi r sub g squared times one half the thickness of the slab, where t is simply the thickness of the slab. So that's another way in which you could express the charge inside the Gaussian surface. All right, knowing that, let's go ahead and plug all that in. So the electric field is going to be equal to Q inside, which is going to be the density times pi r sub g squared times small h divided by the area, the surface area of the Gaussian surface, which only is going to be the very top portion, the only portion with electric field or electric flux going through. So that's pi r sub g squared times epsilon sub naught. So this cancels out this, and essentially the electric field above a slab is going to be equal to the volume charge density times H, that's half the thickness of the slab, divided by epsilon sub naught, or that's going to be equal to the density times half the thickness of the slab, divided by epsilon sub naught. Either way is fine, depends upon how you want to express it. Now, H is a constant, this is a constant, this is a constant, 
Again, we notice that with a slab of charge, where the, the charge is distributed throughout the slab, the strength of the electric field above the slab only depends on the charge density and not on the distance away from the charge, as long as the slab is large enough to be considered virtually infinite and the distance above the slab is small compared to the size of the slab. If that's true, this will be the strength of the electric field away from the slab. And that's how it's done.